All right. Well, about you know, two minutes after 12, and I'm on time usually, so we'll, we'll get started. So um, welcome, everybody, for joining me today. I'm Dr. Michael Twyman. I'm a board-certified cardiologist. I'm a heart attack and stroke prevention expert, and I'm also a biohacker, which means a health optimizer. So I try to uh, do things that optimize my health and longevity that don't necessarily require pills and procedures. So today, we're going to go a little bit over you know, you know, an update on what's going on with COVID-19. Uh, we'll go over some of the things you can do to protect yourself. And then also I'm going to go through all my kind of uh, light blocking uh, gear and also light uh, absorbing gear. So uh, this is basically a talk about how to improve your redox potential, your ability to make energy in your cells. So uh, first off, just a little bit of uh, history, you know, what's going on with COVID. Uh, right now I know in St. Louis, we're a little less than uh, 200 cases in St. Louis County. Um, in Missouri, about a little over 500 cases. And then nationwide, I know we're, you know, in the mid 80,000 range at the point, and the US has now overtaken China and Italy as the number one um, positive uh, cases of uh, COVID 19. Part of this can be due in part to that just increased testing. Um, there's still a lot of under testing happening. So I've seen examples of, you know, people quoting maybe 5 to 10x higher infection rate. Um, some people obviously are asymptomatic and aren't going to get picked up in the, uh, the testing. Um, so, you know, while you know, worldwide there might be you know, 500,000 quote positive cases so far, there might be 5 to 10 million people who have actually been exposed and infected. And so the number one thing right now is just try not to overwhelm the, the hospital systems, you know, especially the intensive care units. You know, if you just need an example of that, just look at Northern Italy and what's going on currently in New York City. You know, I don't necessarily anticipate that in St. Louis County. You know, the hospital system is all working closely together to try to prevent this. And we're about a week or two behind what's going on in New York. So watch what's going on in New York, and that's what you got to be concerned about what's coming here. So, yeah, you know, I'm not going to tell you anything different than uh, the CDC and the, the WHO and that, you know, social distancing is the number one thing to be doing right now. So quarantine yourself, avoid large crowds, wash your hands routinely, don't touch the T-zone, your eyes, your nose, your mouth. Um, that's the way you spread the virus. And as a preventive cardiologist, you know, yes, I can take care of people having heart attacks, but it's always much more rewarding and uh, beneficial to uh, try to prevent it in the first place. Same thing with COVID. Yes, they're experimenting with different uh, drug treatments to try to uh, treat uh, COVID, but mostly it's still supportive care, meaning they just try to wait for your immune system kick in enough to be able to knock down the virus. Um, yes, many times uh, you can do this at home. Still about 80% of people have more mild symptoms and they're doing this at home. About 15 to 20 percent people end up needing hospitalization, and then a few percentage of those point people need to go to the ICU. If you go to the ICU and you end up on a vent, there's still extremely high mortality rates, maybe up to even 90 percent. So your whole goal is don't get so far into the game that you end up getting intubated. Prevention is the key. Some of the stuff you're not going to be able to do, you know. So if you already have high blood pressure, diabetes, heart disease, you know, you're at higher risk. You need to be more strict with your quarantine, your hand washing, and just avoiding people until this thing really cools down. Um, they're in the you know, early stages of being able to develop the antibody testing. Once they have the antibody testing, you'll be able to get tested, know had you been exposed and have you recovered. If you've recovered, then it's possible you can go back into the you know, society and not be reinfected at this point. There's also data that you might be able to donate serum, it's called convalescent serum. Your antibodies then are given somebody who's very sick and that might help them recover quicker. Um, that's why I'm being one of the most, more promising things, and they're already starting to do that Mount Sinai in New York. But that testing is not yet commercially available. I keep looking every day because once it's available, I would like to get tested because the second I know that I've been exposed and recovered, then I would donate blood. Um, so welcome to people on uh, the uh, Instagram. Thanks for joining Weber Medical. Yeah, we're definitely going to be talking about uh, some of my light hacking gear, and I just got this the other week, and definitely excited to be using this right now. So. Um, that's a little bit about kind of the, the background, you know, of what's going on with COVID. Prevention is the key, and I frequently talk about this in my cardiology practice. You know, it's kind of the four pillars of health. Um, you know, how well do you sleep? How well do you deal with your stress? How well do you eat? How well do you move? Those things don't change. The better you take care of yourself right now, the better you can do if you end up getting infected with COVID. So we'll go through these briefly. Um, nutrition, don't make major changes. Mostly important, you know, try to... Uh, Try to eat in a 12-hour window or less. That's kind of the time restricted. Give your body some time to recover. That helps reset your circadian rhythm, your 12-hour cycles. I'm sorry, your 24-hour cycles. Then, you know, we'll talk about this with, you know, your redox potential. 
DHA is extremely important. DHA is what's found in mostly cold water fish. DHA helps you transmit energy from your environment to your cells. You know, exercise, keep doing what you've been doing. This isn't a time to, you know, just Netflix and chill and do nothing that you were doing previously. Um, but don't add on, you know, intensive exercise. If you weren't, you know, ultra marathoner before, you probably want to dial that back because that's very, you know, pounding on the body right now, beats up your immune system. You need to recover, you know, before you can uh, um, do those type of activities and you don't want to overstress your body at this time. So routine exercise is fine, but don't take up marathon running or something like that if you weren't routinely doing that before. Stress, stress is going to be ubiquitous during this, and that's going to be one of the biggest concerns what's going on with this is not just, you know, are we going to overwhelm the hospital system, but, <clears throat> you know, how is the mental health of America and the world going to do with this? Um, you know, anxiety, depression are going to be at all-time highs, and so, you know, what can you do to help yourself? So. Deep breathing exercises, mindfulness, meditation. Uh, I frequently use heart math in my cardiology practice. It's a thing that clips your ear, measures your heart rate variability. It helps you kind of reset your sympathetic and parasympathetic tone. The better those are in balance, the better your stress levels are. You lower cortisol. Cortisol is one of your stress hormones. You're able to bring melatonin up. Melatonin is a hormone that helps you sleep, but it's also the hormone that is a massive antioxidant. It's also something that allows your body to repair the mitochondria at night. The mitochondria are the organelles in your cells that make energy for you. If your mitochondria go, wherever they break is where you're gonna have an issue. So bringing your stress levels down is key during this time. However you can do that, ideally, you know, do it with something that doesn't require a pharmaceutical uh, intervention, but if it does, that's okay. But one thing you should definitely be careful about is not overdoing it on alcohol right now. You know, alcohol, you know, Low doses, you know, maybe is slightly beneficial for keeping your blood thin. High doses, your body has to deal with that toxin. You overtax the system, your immune system starts coming down. So don't overdo the alcohol to try to, you know, deal with your stress with this right now. And then sleep. Sleep is extremely important for your immune system. And actually, after this talk, I'm going to give another talk to a bunch of medical professionals about how important your circadian rhythms and sleep is. So your circadian rhythm is your 24-hour cycle. You know, the two major things that set your circadian rhythm are the light that enters your eyes and also the timing that meals come in. So the meal part, you know, first thing that comes in your mouth in the morning time that isn't water, set your liver and gut clock for the day. 12 hours after that point, try to stop putting stuff in the system so that the liver and gut have time to shut off. Ideally, three to four hours before you go to bed. This is coming out of work from Dr. Panda. He has a great book called The Circadian Code. I recommend it to you know, many of my patients. Explains all the science behind it. But if you give your liver and gut three to five hours to turn off, you're able to get into better fat burning mode, body composition improves for the most part, blood sugar starts to improve. Um, but it also helps people who have sleep issues get deep sleep. The deeper you sleep, the better you're able to repair yourself. So welcome to more people on Instagram. So, um, so deep sleep, extremely important. Now we'll talk about the light stuff because that's kind of how I got known as a biohacker or just health optimizer. So these are particular blue blocking glasses. They just block the light that comes from your technology. So I'll kind of explain what an optimal light environment would be and then show you some of my gear and gadgets. So ideally you awake right around the sunrise. Go out, see the sun, nothing between your eyes and the sun. So no glasses, ideally no contacts. The light that enters your eye in the morning time, blue light, is balanced with red light. That blue light from the sun raises cortisol, wakes you up for the day, you start releasing hormones that your body needs for the day. It's balanced because Mother Nature intended it that way. When you come inside and you're under artificial lights, which there are none in this room on at this time, or you're sitting in front of your technology, that light that comes from your technology is about four to five times intense on the blue light. That blue light, there's receptors in your eye called melanopsin. It's also on your skin. That blue light knocks off the um, compounds that are on the melanopsin receptor and it destroys vitamin A cycling, which ultimately will affect vitamin D. But the big thing that it also affects is your melatonin. Again, melatonin is that hormone that initiates sleep and helps your body repair itself. So when you're inside under artificial light, and especially when you're in front of your technology, you want to be protecting your eyes. Normally, if you see me in the office, I've been wearing these ones. You know, these are my kind of day walker ones or you know, daytime ones. They block 40 to 50% of the blue light. But during these times, I'm wearing these more often. These are my red ones. They block up to 550 nanometers. So it's blocking all the blue and all the, for the most part, most of the green spectrum. So you're protecting melanopsin um, 
more effectively. And so I'll use this in front of all this technology. Right, I got three screens going, you know, Facebook, Instagram, and Zoom. So, um, so I will use this one in front of a lot of technology. So other than protecting your eyes, it's also important to protect your skin. There are receptors on your skin that sense light. So when you sleep, your bedroom should be a sanctuary. It should be dark, ideally be cool, and you shouldn't be able to see your hand in front of your face. So dark out shades, eye mask if you don't, uh, can't get it completely dark, and any type of night light you have in your room, ideally should be something like um, an amber bulb or a red bulb so it doesn't affect your night vision. Uh, so that's kind of the kind of light hacking stuff. Then what you can do to build your redox potential. Your redox potential is your ability to basically store energy in your cells. Uh, you know, the sun is the number one thing. I'm always going to be recommending the sun. Yes, I have a lot of light gear in here, but the sun is always going to be more powerful. So every one of my patients, I want you out there at sunrise, you know, five, 10 minutes at least, and multiple times throughout the day. There's an app called D-Minder. D-Minder is a free app. It lets you know what time it did to be outside to optimize your vitamin D exposure. So if you're very white and pasty because you've been inside all winter long, you're not going outside all day long just yet. It's like a, you know, it's like a callus. You need to build it up slowly. Use this app to help do that uh, in the right way. I've been building up my solar callus since November. I've been down to Mexico twice and was in Puerto Rico recently. So I've kind of slowly built up my redox potential through the winter time. So hopefully my immune system is at peak optimization right now. So still use the sun no matter what. If it's cloudy, you know, you might not get as much UV, but there's still beneficial wavelengths coming from the sun every single day. And then if you're inside, minimize your artificial light as much as possible. If you're going to use artificial light, try to use some of the better sources of light. And so I'll start showing you some of my gear here. So, um, so I have, you can see my face kind of lit up red. Um, I'll show you that one in a second, but I frequently ask, you know, what kind of light bulbs do I use? Um, you know, yes, I have LED bulbs in my house. I don't use them during the nighttime. I shut them off. I got those before I knew all about this, the kind of light uh, mitigation stuff. But, you know, in a couple of my rooms, I have red LED bulbs. This is about like a $10, $15 bulb from Home, Le Home Depot or Lowe's. Um, you know, I just plug it into a lamp, and at nighttime, it preserves your night vision. Um, you can get around your house fine. You know, your house ends up looking like a submarine or a, you know, photo development shop or something like that. But uh, I don't care because it helps with your sleep optimization. The better you sleep, the better your immune system works. When your immune system works, you're much less likely to have issues with COVID-19. I also have UVA bulbs in my house. I'm kind of using one called Atkins Professional Lighting, uh, black light bulb. You know, basically just put it in a uh, light stand, just take off the, uh, you know, the cover and just turn it on. So I have one sitting right behind me. So I leave the UVA on whenever the sun is up. And I usually turn it off in the evening time, but the UVA, you know, somewhat can help sterilize the environment, but it also charges the water in your cells. <clears throat> the one thing that I use routinely when I have a lot of computers on is I do have a, a red light box and a little bit hard to see on some of the devices. So this is a particular uh, red light device from EMR Tech. Full disclaimer, uh, I'm not a, an affiliate for any of these companies. I purchase this all on my own and just devices that I've tested and researched and know effectively work. So I'm not paid to talk about any of these devices. Um, but this one has two different settings. It has a very bright central bulb and a kind of periphery bulb. So if you're doing photobiomodulation, uh, you need to just uh, be you know, eight inches or so away and you know helps with wrinkles in your face. But you know, how would you use this for COVID? Uh, you know, use it on you know, your heart, where a third of your heart is mitochondria, your brain. So mostly this region, but if you have a musculoskeletal injury, you know, put your body part that hurts in front of it for about 20 minutes and it improves. Um, typically during the daytime, I turn off the central bulb and just leave the, the outer ring bulbs on. And just use that as a, a periphery lighting that kind of can balance out some of the blue light that's coming from, from your monitor. Um, Another light bulb that I typically use, this isn't the exact one, but um, uh, Alexander Wunsch, who's a uh, physician in Germany, uh, he had recommended these bulbs, Sora. Um, they pull down a lot of the blue light uh, in the LED bulbs, um, so there's more violet. So um, there's a couple different versions of them, but that's the ones I have in like, my bathroom, so there's technically no blue light in my bathrooms, but I can still see there's enough white light. Um, so Sora is the bulbs I have in some of my rooms. And then um, some of the uh, more advanced stuff, and this is stuff that, uh, you know, definitely read the usual manual. Um, you know, I, it's kind of honking, so I can't really drag in front of everybody right at this moment, but, you know, I do use uh, my Spur DD, 
Now, Spurdy D is a UVA, UVB uh, light box. Um, it has four bulbs in it, so you can make vitamin D. Uh, in the wintertime, when you use this thing, it has a different uh, um, protocol for different Fitzpatrick skin types. So if you're extremely white, you only need a couple minutes. If you're extremely dark, you need more minutes. Follow the guidelines exactly. Um, if you don't know what you're doing with this thing, you will injure yourself. So that's why I don't blanketly recommend it, but if you follow the instructions, you can build up your solar callus at home. So I was using this a little bit before I went down to Mexico, and so I did not burn when I went down to Mexico. And then the thing that I'm most excited about right now um, is I just literally got this uh, you know, about a week and a half ago from Weber Medical. For those that have followed me on uh, Instagram, they may have seen my uh, previous video uh, where I had uh, the intravenous uh, uh, laser therapy. I had done UV and red light um, with a, a practitioner in St. Louis. Um, the IV laser you know, is an awesome piece of equipment, uh, especially if you have an autoimmune condition or cancer. That's probably the most common uses for it, but it was initially uh, discovered in the uh, essentially the 1980s, Russian scientists, that it was very useful for cardiovascular uh, benefits, you know, help reduce angina, chest pain, <clears throat> and may help with other uh, cardiovascular conditions. Because of the Cold War, a lot of that data kind of got lost on the Western scientists until uh, just recently. But the, you know, the intravenous laser, you know, good if you're extremely sick, but not everybody's gonna have access to one of those things. They do have something called the, uh, you know, the Weber Laser Watch. It's um, you know, a little bit thickened, but has different uh, diodes at the bottom of it. And I'll just show it to all the different cameras right now. But these different diodes, um, there is red light, there is yellow, there's green and blue light, so you can see the stuff light up, lighting up, lighting up. So it goes over your left wrist and it's basically putting the laser therapy directly into your radial and ulnar arteries. So um, I always do feel my hand tingling because it's dilating the blood vessels. Um, but this different light therapy can help with oxygen delivery to the cells. It helps with stimulating mitochondria directly. So it's helping build your redox potential. There are a couple adapters to it. There's one for your ears that can help with ringing the ears. And then this one kind of crazy looking, but goes up your nose and it's red light therapy. So uh, I tried it yesterday just to see what it'd be like um, before I recommend it to any patients. But, um, but if I was to um, start coming down with COVID-19 symptoms, I'd be using that all day long to try to treat the mucous membranes in your sinuses. There's no data that the red light by itself is going to uh, knock down COVID-19, but it would not hurt. There's some data that they had done with uh, the intravenous laser for when MERS was going on, which was uh, in 2012, 2013, I believe. You know, they don't have you know, absolute conclusive data, but with a UV laser, they were able to knock down some of the viral replication of this thing. So then your immune system can go in there and take care of the virus. So if I were to get extremely sick uh, with COVID-19, I would be looking for the, uh, the intravenous laser if I could get access to it. Uh, so that's a little bit the, the run through of all my kind of uh, light gadgets and my light blocking gadgets. Um, so at this time I will, um, open it up to uh, any questions. So um, uh, let me uh, just uh, let people unmute themselves on the, the Zoom call. And if anybody has any questions on Instagram, I'll be happy to answer anything for you guys. All right, so uh, there's a chat box also open available if you guys want to type it in, in the Zoom call. Um, so let's see. All right, so there's a, one question coming off of Facebook Live. What about vitamin A, D, and C? Um, getting them through your diet, cool, but um, you wanna be careful about taking anything uh, that you haven't normally been taking these times of days because you know the exact mechanisms how COVID is uh, working aren't fully elucidated. So if you take something and you shut off your body's natural production for making these things, you might cause a problem. Um, so, you know, following some other people online, I'm not highly recommending to, you know, high dose vitamin D right now orally. You know, if you start coming down sick, you know, with it at, and you're staying home, maybe a little bit, but get outside in the sun as much as possible right now. There's significant data from the 1918 uh, flu pandemic that the people who are outside tended to do better because the sunlight and the UV radiation will knock down the viral load. So it's hoped that once the kind of the summer comes around, and there's more UV that this COVID infection kind of will flatten the curve. It may not completely go away. This might become seasonal, but if we can knock it down for a while, 
we'll have more time to have more ventilators to see if more medications can actually treat this and I'll give the vaccine scientists more time to develop the vaccine, test it, make sure it's safe before I start administering it. So vitamin D, build it up naturally, use the D-Mind rep. Now vitamin C, um, taking oral, it's very hard for you to get enough in um, to be fully effective. There is data that the Merrick protocol, which has high dose vitamin C, is helpful for bacterial sepsis. It's likely helpful for this. You know, if you end up in ICU critically ill, you're gonna be depleting your body's stores of vitamin C, so it may be useful in that instance. But before you're sick, taking a bunch of vitamin C and knocking down your body's ability to make reactive oxygen species might not be a wise idea. You want your immune system to turn on to start fighting the virus. If you knock it down too much, you might be causing a problem. Um, there's a question here. We couldn't see the bulbs on Zoom you showed. Um, please, in the questions, uh, type which bulbs, because I showed about 10 bulbs, um, and I wrote out what they are um, on the screen. So. All right, so yes, uh, Weber Medical, I am enjoying my watch. I'm actually using it twice a day right now, so. All right, and then we got, you know, a good amount of people on the Zoom call. Uh, what, uh, what questions does the Zoom, uh, Zoom people have? You can type it in or uh, unmute yourself and ask the question if you like. I have a question. Yes. Um, will any of the information that you've just been talking about be written down someplace uh, where you send out anything? Because you, you spoke so quickly about some of that I didn't quite get everything. All of this is being recorded. This video will be available up on my YouTube channel when it's done. Um, it's also available in my private Facebook group, the Apollo Cardiology Group. Um, the YouTube channel is just Michael Plyman, MD. Um, it's not a specific group uh, on YouTube yet because I don't have 100 subscribers. So if you could help me out, if you go to my YouTube channel and subscribe, you'll be notified when the new videos come out. But right now, there's no uh, particularly written uh, format of this because data is moving very quick. So video has been a little bit easier to get the information out. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, is zinc helpful against the virus? Uh, possibly. Um, you know, I wouldn't necessarily take it prophylactically, but if you start coming down with fevers, uh, cough, um, you know, or you start having GI symptoms, um, then I think it'd be useful to start taking a little bit of zinc. What's that you were saying about vitamin C? Just about the time I got online? Um, it's mostly only beneficial in critically ill people and high doses in IV format. Taking it in oral form, um, it's really hard to absorb enough. Um, and you want your body's immune system to be able to function. So, you know, there's always this talk about, you know, how do I make my immune system work better? You know, it's gonna be the lifestyle things. It's sure. sleeping, it's eating right, moving your body, dealing with stress. You know, taking a bunch of extra supplements or medications. If you do something wrong and you mess up your immune system or you make your immune system hyper-responsive, or maybe you set yourself up for an autoimmune condition or you do worse if you get the COVID infection. So you don't want to be doing a lot of stuff that quotes boost your immune system. You just want your immune system to work the way it's supposed to work. Um, but if you're critically ill, uh, doing the, the IV vitamin C, especially in the Merrick protocol, definitely was you know uh, showing at least in some trials a couple of years ago, helping with bacterial infections. It's likely to help if you have severe sepsis. You know, I hate to tell you this, but you do speak awful fast. Yeah, probably I do, yeah. There's a lot of information to, to get out. So, I mean, uh, I know it, but we're sitting here and we're fairly patient. Sure. So, slow said, down just a little bit. Sure. And maybe that'll help our old ears be able to pick you up well. Sure. And then, uh, one trick is I, I, I mean, I, I, I should take that back as feedback. Thank you for the feedback. Is uh, actually, usually, when I use the podcast or YouTube, I'm usually listening at the 1.5 or 2x. I'm listening at faster speed. So, maybe I'm trying to, to match that speed. <laughs> But one trick is if you listen to this on YouTube, you can actually slow it down to 0 0.5 speed. So maybe I am talking a little bit slower than at that point then. <laughs> hey, what do you know about the uh, chloroquine, the art, net, art what's it called? Yeah. Artesanate, those kinds of things. What do you know about those? 
I don't know about the second one, but on uh, the, the question is about uh, some of the treatment options. So I shied away with a little bit on this one. I was more focusing on the prevention aspects. Prevention is always going to be key. So, you know, wash your hands, social distancing, um, get your sleep to make your immune system work better, get enough sunlight, all that's going to be the key. But once you end up and you're actually sick, sick, um, yeah, they're rapidly trying to figure out what is the best protocol. So there's different ways that they're working on it. So the way hydrochloroquine and chloroquine potentially work is that it's blocking the virus from binding to the receptor that uh, is attached in the lungs. The drug wow. from uh, Gilead was blocking the viral replication once the virus got inside the cell. Um, the HIV medications, the Kaletra, are also blocking some of the way that the, the proteases are making proteins inside the cell. And then there's ones, uh, Telusimab. Uh, it's normally used as a... Um, immune modulator for people with autoimmune conditions. It knocks down interleukin-6. So you want your immune system to turn on to fight the virus, but if your immune system goes crazy and goes overwhelmed on it, you start damaging a bunch of other cells as collateral. Um, and so they're using this medication to kind of pull down the immune system a little bit. So it's kind of like Goldilocks. You want your immune system just working perfectly. Too much, you have um, you know, these cytokine storms and your body starts uh, shutting down. That's essentially what happened in the 1918 flu is that was more the young people we're having big issues with that because they mounted such an aggressive immune response. What did you say the name of your uh, YouTube channel is? There's no particular name for it yet, but just if you use a search for Mycobiamin MD in like a YouTube box, you'll find the channel. But if you okay. do me a favor, just subscribe to it. Once I hit 100 subscribers, then I can uh, name it to something to be like Dr. Twine and make it a lot easier to tell people how to find it then. Okay. All right. And if uh, Weber Medical is still on Instagram, I do have a question for you is, is there a particular protocol on the, uh, on the laser watch uh, that's useful? Right now I'm using all four colors for 30 minutes, but at the, at the highest uh, intensity, but just interested if there's any particular protocols uh, for immune modulation. Any other questions coming in? Or is there any other topics you want me to hit upon? You know, if, if this ends early, that's fine. You know, I'm gonna be keep doing these uh, as more data comes out. You know, the next definitely scheduled one is next Monday at 6 p.m. Central Time. It'll be via Zoom. Um, I'll also put it on Instagram and Facebook. Um, all the videos are gonna be reposted in my Facebook group, Apollo Cardiology. So if you're not a member there, just uh, request access and I'll grant you access to it. And then the longer form videos are going to be de definitely up on YouTube a little bit later. And as a side note, for those who are actually currently my patients of cardiology, you know, we are open for business, um, but everything's 100% virtual. It can be done via Zoom calls. So if you have blood work to go over it with, we we'll review it here uh, live. Cassie logs on and, you know, we get you set up to do whatever you need to do. If you have any particular questions on how to, you know, deal with your immune system, you know, we can do, do that as well and your kind of usual consults but we are closed to doing any type of procedure. So the CIMTs that tell you how old your arteries are and the endopads that tell you how healthy your blood vessels are, those are on hold at least until uh, the social distancing stuff gets relaxed. Uh, what is the brand for the laser watch? It's made by a company called uh, Weber, Weber Medical out of Germany. Our quest and the other uh, blood drawing places, are they open for business? As far as I know, they still are. Um, okay. I've been pretty good about my social distancing. So since I went 100% telemedicine, um, I've been out of my house maybe four times. Yeah. Once to the grocery store, once to Lowe's, and then once to the Apollo office to uh, pick up any mail and water the plants and make sure everything was okay there. All right, everybody. Well, I'm gonna probably let you go then. Um, thank you for joining me today. You know, if you need any help in the interim, you know, shoot me an email at apollocardiology at gmail.com 
you know, same website, apollocardiology.com. You can book appointments with us or ask us questions. Um, but all my kind of COVID stuff is going to be on mostly Instagram. That's where I'm doing more of my information. If you're in the Facebook group, I will also be sharing some articles from some other colleagues. So thank you guys and have a great day. And uh, we'll see you back on Monday. See you guys. See you on Facebook.